Welcome to my first vegetable garden. This is actually my second YouTube channel. And for 2021, my first vegetable garden is going to be all about brand new gardeners. And this is the start of the series, and I encourage you to join along. I'm going to show you in this video how to set up these 100, 150 gallon fabric pots by Root Pouch. This is going to be a complete garden series. So for 2021, if you want to set up a 4x10 space, you could do it in the ground. You can pick all these products up, all these root pouches at my seed shop. You could follow me along exactly. But I'm going to show you how to set up this space, grow cool weather crops, warm weather crops, and cool weather crops again in the fall for a family up to a family of four. So I will show you how to set this up, how to plant seeds, how to plant transplants, how to tend, how to care for diseases, how to harvest, all kinds of tricks that you can do how to feed, fertilize, talk about watering, everything. So you can just follow along for 2021 with me in real time and I will show you how to grow this garden space. So let's get started. I want to show you how to fill up these fabric pots. You can do it more cheaply than going and buying, you know, the potting mix bags or the raised bed mix bags at those big box stores. That's going to cost you a fortune. So I'm going to show you how to use resources from around your property. So that's a 100 gallon root pouch and that's a 150 gallon root pouch. We are affiliated with Root Pouch. We sell fabric pots at our seed shop and we have a set of three set up right now for new vegetable gardeners. And it's all part of a series my brother and I are going to be doing on taking people from the beginning, starting your first vegetable garden, all the way through the season. And where we're going to start is really setting up these raised beds. So what you need is about a four foot wide by 10 foot space and you can drop in a 100 gallon fabric pot, a 150 gallon fabric pot, and another 100 gallon fabric pot. In this video I just want to show you how to set this up in the most inexpensive way because if you're just starting your first vegetable garden you don't want to spend a lot of money. These fabric pots are relatively inexpensive compared to other raised beds. I highly recommend them. So the reason we picked the fabric pots for this series is because these can be used anywhere. So if you really do want to save money, the best way to do it is to really just grow right in the earth, of course. But you may not have the earth. The soil may not be right. It may be too sandy. It could be rocky. These can be put on wooden decks, on concrete. They could even put in your driveway. So this is just a way for all of us to be able to grow the same way. But you can follow along in the series if you just want to grow in beds or grow in a different way. But we're going to show you how to set up the fabric pots because they can be really used anywhere and they're really, really versatile. So to set this up, now you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I do recommend cutting a hole about that size, maybe a softball right in the middle. That will allow worms to come up. And that's if you're gonna be setting your fabric pots down on the ground. If you're not gonna be setting them on the ground, maybe you're putting them on concrete or on a deck, don't cut a hole in it. But th that's what I would recommend if you're doing it right here on the ground. The next thing that I would say is you can pick up the fabric pots Pick out your spot, lay down cardboard right over the grass, drop some mulch on top of it. You're not going to have to dig or turn the ground and then you lay your pots right on top of there. So that's basically how you get started. Now before we get to filling, a couple basics. You want to make sure that the pots are placed in a space or in a place in your yard where it's going to, where they're going to get six hours minimum of sun. Eight hours of full sun is perfect, but you want the sunlight to be hitting this for a solid six hours. It could be broken up over the day, but just make sure you set these down where you're getting six hours of direct sunlight onto the plants that are going to be growing in there. So I just wanted to cut in to show you what you're building. So these are cool weather crops, some herbs in there. I'll go over planting all of these and growing these in the series. I just wanted to give you an idea of what the space is going to look like. And again, this is going to be plenty of room for growing vegetables for up to a family of four. So this is already set up. I have another video on this for, uh, I'm going to be growing something else in here, potatoes. But the setup is the same. In the bottom third, you're going to put down shredded hardwood, wood chips, materials that maybe aren't fully decayed right into the bottom. In the middle section, decent stuff, maybe dirt from around your yard. It could be any kind of earth. I'm going to be using uh, edging that I do around my flower bed. And then on the, the final third, the top third, that's where you put in your better stuff. If you were, good, were going to go and buy bag soil and try and fill these up, which is perfectly fine, pick up a potting mix or a raised bed mix. It'll say it right on the package at your big box stores. 
it's kind of expensive so if you fill the whole thing that way you're going to be spending a lot of money so if you follow this you can put the wood chips and uh, leaves and different things in the bottom third decent stuff in the middle and then you can put that potting mix on top save yourself some money so first thing this is double shredded hardwood I recommend you can buy it in bags it's expensive that way or you can look at your local landscape companies around your area and they will drop double shredded hardwood double shredded just means it's shredded more finely it's not big wood chips and then you're gonna drop in about two inches worth this will hold water so it will help your plants out over the summer and it's a great place for the worms to crawl into so two inches or so of shredded hardwood now let's go collect some more materials and if you want to subscribe we'll go over everything that you need to learn to grow your own vegetables in your own raised beds so what we're doing now is we're using different materials to fill this up in an inexpensive way but also using materials that your plants will enjoy earthworms will enjoy microbiology will enjoy joy and that takes us to the next thing these are shredded leaves I just run them over with the lawnmower let's keep them in a container use them as needed so we're gonna put in a good three or four inches into there mix it in with the wood this will be a great bottom layer and then we'll add more materials let me do that and show you the outcome so we have that bottom third filled up with materials that aren't fully composted down so I recommend setting these up in the fall or winter in most areas that will give you a good four months before we go and plant in there and during that four month period this will break down the worms will help break it down soil microbiology will help break it down if we did this like let's just say today filled it up wanted to plant in it tomorrow the materials in here could compete with your plants for nitrogen and they're not going to grow as well sometimes that happens we'll talk more about that in future videos but in setting these raised beds up these fabric pots up I recommend doing this in the fall or winter let it set up it'll be perfect for planting now if you were going to do this in the spring you'd want to try and do it a good really 60 days before you would plant so maybe you want to plant in May so you'd want to set this up in March and what we would do is we'd add in some granular fertilizer to help provide nitrogen to speed up this process but for right now we're doing this uh, in October November I'm going to give it several months to set up and be ready for planting now that we filled the bottom third to about here let's go get that earth from around uh, my garden and around my house and then just drop that in there so I'm basically doing some uh, fall chores I'm edging out my flower bed and I'm taking that clay soil clay soil is perfectly fine putting it into the wheelbarrow loosening it up and it's going to go into the fabric pot raised bed now you can keyword search on my youtube channel uh, container mixes or bag soil mixes it'll give you a lot of information about what you can buy out there how you can make your own but I want to keep it simple the whole idea is to get your garden space set up now in the fall or early spring so that you can plant into it so we're going to just take this dirt over there and pour it right into the fabric pot so now we're introducing soil microbiology from the soil right into the fabric pot and you're going to find all kinds of grubs and stuff in there you can't worry about it they're going to show up you mean get rid of them if you want to but we're just going to take this wonderful clay soil and drop it in there there's a lot of mi micronutrients in here there's nitrogen phosphorus potassium all kinds of soil life so as you're dumping it in you can go ahead and work it in to the top inch or so of the leaves but we want to take this to a little bit past halfway with just the earth that we're collecting from around where you live it'll save you a lot of money so you can see we put in the whole wheelbarrow full of stuff in there and there's still a lot to go so this is really a good way to save money to do it this way if you want to spend the money and you have the money to buy the bag stuff go ahead and do that but it could cost easily probably 40 to 60 dollars to fill this up with bag products and maybe 80 bucks to fill up this bigger one over here as you're going through this you know take out the roots and weeds just throw them in a pile somewhere and again you're going to find all kinds of stuff in the soil toss them out if you want to but don't worry about it you actually want to bring in all the insect lives the worms 
microbiology and just get a good ecosystem going in here. So I'm going to keep filling this up till we get, you know, two thirds of the way filled up. So you may be wondering why I'm not saying fill this full of compost, uh, use manures. I'm going to assume, because this series is about your first vegetable garden, that you don't have compost bins set up yet. We'll talk about manures and compost over the video series for 2021. But for right now, the whole goal is really the biggest barrier to people getting started, and that's setting up the garden. So we're just setting up the beds today. I'll teach you about all the other stuff going forward. So look at all that earth that I got. It's a little bit different than what we just put in. There's clay in there, but it's a little bit of a different color. Dug a hole two feet deep because I'm going to be dropping a post, dropping cement, and on top of the post I'm going to be putting this cast iron bell. So again, I'm doing all these projects around the house, taking the earth, putting it right into the raised bed pots. This way I save some money. So remember I said as we get to the top we want better stuff. And better stuff just really means it drains well, Seeds will start better in it, and we just we would be adding amendments. If you buy the bag stuff, it's basically a combination of some earth, but it's mostly peat moss and shredded hardwood. Now, you can get a three cubic foot bale of peat moss for about $12. It goes really far in setting up your beds, and it'll save you a lot of money because you're just buying the peat moss as a direct product. Again, check out my videos on making container mix. But if you take 50% peat moss, 50% of whatever earth you're pulling out of your ground, you start making a nicer garden soil or a container mix. This is perfect for 10 gallon containers, 20 gallon containers, but it's also nice for these larger containers. So by using the earth from your ground and then buying peat moss uh, directly as a three cubic foot bale, rather than buying the potting mix, you're going to save yourself money. And you would just do a 50-50 mix of peat moss, your earth, and then you can put it right into the bed. Now, that being said, on the bottom, leaves that aren't fully composted down, shredded hardwood, decent stuff in the middle, more earth on top, maybe cut in with some container mix, and you get the idea is that we're just moving the better stuff to the top. This will all settle out and actually, it, over the years, earthworms and stuff will move all this organic matter through here. So as we get to the end of the series, you're going to learn how to use compost and top dress your raised beds and the earthworms will pull that down into your soil. So today, just get these beds filled, get your garden set Alright, so we've almost leveled off to that two-thirds marker and you can see worms are ending up in here. That's what you want to see. That's great. We would level this off and getting back to what I was saying. So here's 50% peat moss, 50% earth, and you just mix it together. Let me mix this up to show you what it would look like. So when you're done, you have something that looks like this. 50% of the earth, 50% peat moss, and that's pretty good for planting. Again, more worms are in there. So I'm fine with making something like this, like the 50-50 mix, and finishing out the entire raised bed here and you really didn't spend a lot of money. It's a combination of paying for the shredded hardwood, paying for the peat moss, taking leaves from your area or from friends or family, and then using some dirt that you're digging up for different, from different projects. Okay, let me finish this up. All right, so it's empty. This is where we're at. Now, as you're filling this, you wanna be kinda of tugging on the sides, working it down, make sure you're getting your circle. But you can see what the 100 gallon looks like. We'll be able to plant many different plants in here. It'll be really cool. You're also not going to have to replace this every year. So once you get it set up now, I'm going to teach you how to be more self-reliant, more self-sufficient, and keep this really sustainable by using compost and manures on top, and that will feed the worms, the microbiology, and that will keep all of this soil in good shape for you to plant in this year after year after year. So you may have to spend a little bit more money now to pick up your raised beds, your root pouches, get the materials to fill it up, but this will be good for years. So don't think you have to do this every year. All right, so I put in another mix of peat moss and the clay soil from around my area, getting close to the top. It's really the top four inches, six inches you want to have, want to be better stuff in case you're gonna be planting seeds in there. Now again, if you wanna to subscribe to my first vegetable garden, specifically this series, I will show you how to plant and do everything. 
through 2021. You can just follow along and I'll show you how to plant cool weather crops, warm weather crops, fall crops again, and take care of everything in between. So as we get to the top, I'm gonna to spend a little bit money. Here in Maryland, you can buy a product called Leaf Grow. It's composted leaves or leaf mold. It's a great soil conditioner. That's about $5.60. I'm also getting garden soil. Garden soil is like one step below a potting mix. You could spend up on the potting mix, but potting mix is just more wood product, more peat moss, sometimes and perlite, um, just to kind of loosen it up a little bit. For a container this size, a root pouch this size, you could use the garden soil. I'm also gonna to toss in some of the peat moss, which is a cheaper way to do it. Anyway, I'm gonna use these products to build the top four inches or so, and then we'll mulch on top, and then we're gonna to move to the next bed. Originally, I said I was gonna put potatoes in here. Um, that doesn't make sense for this video series because most of you won't be growing potatoes. So all these beds are gonna be all the different kind of vegetables and herbs you might grow, so I'll show you how so to I do that. So I just wanted to show you the bag stuff because remember, there's lots of pieces of wood in here that you can see. So we're making our own, that's a lot cheaper. Again, buying it this bagged way can be more expensive, but for the top four inches or so, I don't mind doing that. And then the leaf grow is just composted and broken down leaves. So mixing this, this, some peat moss will be a great top for this raised bed. All right, so one of the 100 gallon root pouches are filled up. This will be perfect come the spring. We put in you know, the stuff that was a little bit more expensive on top. You want to leave about two inches. Going to finish it off with some leaves that just fell this week. You could also put green grass clippings on here. You know, just put them across just like that. Let it sit here for the next four or five months and we'll get to planting. So please subscribe. Again, I'm going to do an entire planting from spring till November using these raised beds. So I'm going to fill up the rest and then I'm going to review a couple important tips and I will see you hopefully about February. All right, so the biggest barrier to really starting a garden is actually getting it started. So I encourage you to build something in the earth, use these fabric pots if you like, but just get something built in the fall. Now the keys to being successful is making sure your garden gets six hours of sun or more. If you don't get six full hours of direct sun, you're gonna be disappointed. You also wanna make sure that when you're filling the beds, you're putting materials that aren't that great, need to be composted down in the bottom third. It takes a while for the roots to reach down there. And because we're doing this in the fall, you get four or five months for it to break down and become better stuff. In the middle third, that's gonna be earth from around your um, yard. Doesn't have to be the greatest stuff, but the roots will do fine in there. And then on the top, just like I showed you, that's where we put our better stuff. Put on some leaves, some grass, this can go to sleep now for the next four or five months and come spring, it'll be perfect. So please subscribe. I'll show you how to plant and take care of everything that we put in here. Tomatoes, peppers, lettuces, kale, onions, herbs, all kinds of different plants, cucumbers. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com and I will see you in February.